everybody, everybody, everybody gets to see the cats. Welcome back, Mangler 3. I'm here. We're going to continue with Final Fantasy XIV. Hopefully today goes better than the last time. I changed a whole bunch of settings so we can see if it works. It's just a test, so if it doesn't, we can try switching to another game, but we'll uh, see how it goes. Sounds like game's already started. Alright, this is where we were trying to continue with uh, this main quest, and we've got a whole bunch of fun stuff to do with chocobos in between stuff, but while we're here, we might as well do this. We're going to go into a battle, into the Copper L. Ah, the Conqueror of Co Copper Bell returns. Thanks to you, our mining operations can resume. And Olda will have the materials she needs to rebuild. The entire nation's in your debt, friend. I'll share the good tidings with Papa Sean the next time I see him. As for you, you'll uh, want to report to Mamodi. Oh, it'll do the woman well to see the life in one piece. <coughs> Shut your mouth, you thieving little swine. You stole from me, don't even think to deny it. Please, sir, I didn't steal nothing. I bought this. Paid for it with me own coin. What rot. You refugees are all the same. Couldn't afford maggoty mole meat, much less a choice cut of dodo. I'm going to say it one more time. Give me back what you stole, or I'll make you wish you never set foot in this town. By rights, I should turn you over to the brass blades, you know. Help keep the streets safe for our law-abiding citizens. But I'm a reasonable man. If you agree to serve me in whatever capacity I require, the authorities need to hear of your crime. <laughs> well, I ain't done nothing wrong. Twelve is me witness. Please, adventurer, help me, I beg ye. I swear I'm in mother's grave. I didn't steal nothing. I bought this with the coin I'd saved. I only wanted to treat me children to a decent meal. And who are you when you're at home? This dog's master? I've had enough with this mummer's farce. You lot teach them a lesson. Alright, defending as a white mage. This will be interesting.
That was it? I ain't getting paid enough for this. Hey, where are y'all going to? Where do you think you're going? Thank you, kind adventurer. Thank you, trice over. Headache. where there were more refugees than when I last looked. And you wouldn't be mistaken. But it's been five years since the calamity. Why are there only why are they only coming here now? It's simple really. While a number of harmless sur hamlets survived the immediate aftermath of the calamity, many were no longer able to support their communities. The residents found their leads had either been rendered barren or cut off from trade routes, and problems like those weren't easily solved. Though they tried to make the best of it, it was only a matter of time before they were forced to abandon their homes and seek a new life in the city. I see. But the calamity affected the whole realm, didn't it? Is the same thing happening in the other cities? If the talk is true, yes. Though perhaps our situation is more pronounced. Ulda has a reputation for being prosperous, so it's natural for the refugees to try their luck here first. My heart goes out to them. It truly does. But I'd be lying if I said that I was a wasn't apprehensive. I hope their presence doesn't form foment lawlessness in the city. Well, if things do take a turn for the worse, we always have the immortal flames. I dare say the brass blades would welcome their help. The heroes who fought the Garlean Empire, patrolling the streets of Riffraff, they may well come to that. Impoverished and desperate as they are, you may be sure that some of the refugees will turn to crime. You know what this place is like. If you've no co coin, you've no hope. <sighs> what it will become of our city? Not all refugees are bad, mind you. Some are able to find employment and lead honest lives. Dodo tenderloins, get your dodo tenderloins, guaranteed cheapest in Thanalan. Thank you for your custom, madam. Please come again. Looking around, you'd think that Holda was well on its way to recovery. But peer through the veil of prosperity, and you'll see no end to the misery and suffering. Wow. Was I going back in time? Er, uh, sir, are you alright? What now? You mean to threaten a defenseless citizen? <clears throat> what? Saw her by the meat, you say? Though so that's absurd. Aye, as did I. Leave the poor woman alone, you darn vulture. Who said that? Sure, I will overlook this, but just this once. Gods bless ye, adventurer. If you hadn't come along when you did, who knows what that monster might have done? It don't bear thinking about.
all's well that ends well. We meet again. Pray do not mistake my intent, for it is always honorable, but I have been watching you ever since you departed Alda. You played the part of envoy to perfection, confident as a man of an undiplomatic mission should be, yet unfailingly courteous to your betters. And when your travels led you in the midst, into the midst of danger, you faced it without so much as a flinch. You, my friend, are quite a marvel, and I confess to being somewhat in awe of you. Ah, but my lavish praise continues. Most of all, I was struck by your readiness to aid those in need, even when words were all the reward you, would ex you could expect to receive. Such selflessness is a rare thing in this day and age. All of which leads me to conclude that you are indeed the one whom I have been looking for, an adventurer possessed of a very rare of a very rare set of qualities. To be sure, your rescue of the damsel in distress was more of a happy accident. But rescue her you did, and that is what matters in the end. We should be glad to assist you in realizing your potential as an adventurer. You need not give me your answer now, think upon it, and if you feel moved to help us, as I pray you shall, speak with Momodi, the ever lovely and youthful mistress of the quicksand. Everyone sending me to Momodi. Tell her the scions of the seventh dawn have found their man and she will tell us where to find us. I will tell you where. Tell it. Tell you. Something. Alright, my buddy. She's right on the other side of the stairs. Seems like that are becoming ever more common, I'm afraid. Don't worry though, if you work hard, you'll probably be alright. Saying that, if you ever find yourself in a spot of bother, come and see me. Just don't go pestering me every time you graze your knee, eh? Of course, I do enjoy hearing tell of a gentleman's woes with the women folk from time to time. Ah, Mangler, sorry to keep you waiting. I was just providing guidance to a fresh off the carriage adventure. But gosh, it's good to see you safe and well. To look at you, no one would <laughs> ever guess you'd been hard at it with giants in the dark. I never doubted for a moment you would succeed. Of course, and neither did Papa Sean, which ain't to say he won't be overjoyed. Ah, uh, before I forget, there's a lass here who wants a word with you. Didn't know ex actually know your name, but hearing her description, I knew who she meant right away. The thank you for sparing the time. I realize you don't know me, but I've been longing to speak with you for a while now. My name is Edda. I'm an adventurer like you. <clears throat> though I'm not very good at being one. If truth be told, anyway, I was adventuring with my friends in Gradania when, when, I'm sorry, we were in Gradania when the leader of our party was killed. His name was Aviri, and he and I were to be wed in the spring. You may not remember him, but to say that he remembered you would be an understatement. He would sing your praises from dawn till dusk. He saw you for what you are, you see, an adventurer's adventurer, and swore that you would be like he would be like you one day. <clears throat> I believe that he would have succeeded had a friend not robbed him of that of the chance. Since that day, I have thought long and hard about giving up adventuring. 
But when I think of the man you are, of all that you've achieved, I find that I am inspired just as a very once was. And so I've started, decided to start again as an adventurer. I will go back to the village of my birth and begin my training anew. But I wanted to meet you first and ask you your name. Mangler. Or Mangler Mike. I shan't forget. Thank you, Mangler. I pray that we will meet again. Fare you well. Adventuring can be a cruel, bleeding business. Time was, I didn't know why anyone would bother. Why they first asked me to take charge of the guild here, I didn't want aught to do with you lot. Thought it'd be a right pain in the butt looking after you all. But against my better judgment, I decided to accept the post, and I'm full glad I did. I feel privileged to be a part of your lives. And that goes double for yours, Mango. Hey? What did you say? You want to know about the scions of the seventh dawn? They're beginning to move in earnest. Then. Listen, Mango, the scions are ain't no ordinary folk, and the work you do ain't no ordinary work. I know full well how capable you are, but even you would think twice about attempting some of the stuff they do, knowing that if you're still certain you want to get involved, I'll tell you what I can. Whoa. Lots of experience for that. Alright, let's keep going. So you want to know more, then do you? Well, ain't that a surprise. I swear, if I painted certain death on one door and limitless wealth on the other, nine times out of ten adventurers would go through the first, and the other bloke wouldn't be able to choose on account of being olden. Anyway, don't say I didn't warn you. First of all, if you're wondering whether you can trust these scions of the seventh dawn, you can't. They're good people who've made it their mission to solve some of Eorzean's most pressing problems. Of course, that ain't no small task, and so they're always looking for dispensable individuals to join them. Individuals like you, Mangler. Now I've been given leave to tell you where to find the science, but you must promise to keep this information to yourself. And you can probably imagine it's something Eorzea's enemies would very much like to know. The Scions are headed to invest, headquartered in Vesper Bay, out in western Thanalon. The place you're looking for is called the Walken Sands. Give your name to whoever is at the entrance, and you'll be let in. You're a man in demand, Mangler, and the days ahead promise to be busy. But I hope you won't forget your old friend Maloney. Drop in and tell me how you're faring from time to time, you hear? Right? Well, I've said my piece. So Alright, so this wants me to go to Vesper Bay. I feel like there was another... Ah, so you think you can ride this chocobo? Okay, that's in the gold saucer, so we'd have to go there to turn this that one. Skip that one for now. Next time we go to the other one. Guess we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the uh, Western Thought Island. Let's see if we can get a ride. Vesper Bay, this is. water while we're marching. Much better. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
it's nighttime. And rainy. Or maybe the cloudiness is supposed to be. Blades are coming out of you. The NPC. business here, I must ask you to... Here at the behest of Thancred, my sincerest apologies. May I please have your name? Mangler Mike. Mangler Mike. Ah, oh, here you are. Did you welcome to the Walking Sands, headquarters of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. My name is Tataru, and I look forward to assisting you during your time with us. The antecedent is within the solar. I shall let her know to expect me. It's down here. It's weird, I'm really big. Tall. Let's see if I can hit my hand. I take it 
taking your main life. Tataru sent word that you can arrive. Lady Minophilia has eagerly awaited your coming. This way, if you please. Ooh, look at that, but I can't use it. Look at that, but I'm not a disciple anymore. I'm a magic point. That's actually worse, so I guess we'll keep going. We get 12 tickets. I don't know what those are. Those. So you're the adventurer of whom I've heard so much. Well met, friend. My name is Minphilia, and I lead the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. I have awaited your coming. Let's take his leaf. Please, be at ease. You are among friends here. There you are. I remember you. No doubt you are right to best with questions. But have patience. All will be revealed in time. First, let me begin by telling you who we are and what we do. We are the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, an order that transcends political boundaries. Our single objective is the preservation of the future of Eorzea. Among our gravest concerns are the godlike beings known as the Primals. Their existence is a bane upon Eorzea, nay, the world at large, and we have striven to find a lasting solution to the threat they pose. Our order is home to a number of individuals who, like you, possess a rare and special talent. This talent takes various forms but one holds particular interest for us. My magic is no, right. Tell me, have you ever experienced a sudden, inexplicable loss of consciousness? A couple minutes ago. Have you ever had the sensation of being pulled away from reality? A couple minutes Felt ago. as though you were hovering in space, a mind without a body? It's called the internet. All these things are the manifestations of your talent. Yours is the power to transcend the boundaries of the soul. A power known as the Echo. The mm. Echo allows you to pass through the walls of a man's soul and hear the resonations of his past. You will be there in his memories and see things as he saw them. You may even interact with that which you see, though you cannot change the outcome of events. For another blessing, the Echo will enable you to know a man's mind even if you cannot comprehend his words. In short, the Echo is a truly extraordinary power, and this power is strong within you. It is only a shame that we cannot use it whensoever we choose. That's right, I too possess the Echo. With that established, let us return to the subject of the Primals. So long as they exist, the realm cannot take so much as a single step towards true peace. Measures must be taken. Measures which transcend boundaries, be they of faction, race, language or creed. And to do so, the Scions require the aid of those with our talent. Make no mistake. The Echo will be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. Without it, we cannot hope to save the realm. I know not what it is you I desire for yourself, it. nor what it was that first brought you to Eorzea. But I firmly believe that the power we possess was given to us for a purpose. Why else would the gods entrust man with a gift so extraordinary, if not to have him use it? And so I implore you, lend us your power. Hmm. In exchange for what? How many more? Naturally, your aid will not go unrewarded. If we are fortunate to have a number of influential allies and that the, a word from me, they will gladly afford you privilege, certain privileges that might otherwise be denied you. 
The right to employ retainers, for example. Are you familiar with them? I've heard of them. They are individuals who may be relied upon to manage your assets and belongings on your behalf. <clears throat> Papers you requested, my lady. It's an interesting shaped paper. Thank you, Tataru. Pleasure is mine, my lady. Welcoming gift. I have taken the liberty of adding your name to the retainer's registry. As of now, you're entitled to employ the services of a retainer. You will need to consult the retainer vocate regarding the particulars of your, this arrangement. But believe me when I say the retainers will prove invaluable to you in your adventuring endeavors. This, let this gesture serve as evidence of our commitment to do all in our power to facilitate your personal objectives. In return, we ask that you aid us to the fullest extent of your talents. So that's the exchange. I get something I can't. A mutually beneficial relationship. I am sure you will agree. In one which serves the greater good besides. Well, that was a veritable lecture, was it not? Forgive me, but it is important that we are all concerned. All concerned are aware of what is expected of them. Now you know our purpose and what we can offer you. I invite you to consider joining us. When you have come to the decision, you may tell me without fear of censure. In good faith, I shall entrust you with our order's password, which our members use to reach one another when it fell. A field. It is Wild Rose. Pray keep it safe. Pray for you. Pray ask me again in six months. What was the password? No, so no. Retainers. Helpful NPC. Storing stuff. And there's people in here. Okay. We Scions have but one objective to see safeguard the future of Eorzea. Among the gravest, our greatest concerns are the godlike beings known as the Primos. Long have we striven to <clears throat> find a lasting solution to that threat they pose. I know not what it is you desire for yourself, nor what it is that first brought you to Eorzea, but I firmly believe that the power we possess may, was given to us for a purpose. Pray consider this when you give me your answer. I will wither I will go wither the wild rose blooms. Yours is no small endeavor. The dangers are great. Nothing. Try nothing. The dangers are great. They are, yet the risks we take are, un are justified, given that which is at stake. Yours is no small endeavor. Small? No. Worthy? Undeniable. We labor for the <clears throat> good of all the room. I will go with her the wild rose blooms. The wild rose by any other name. She's waiting to hear from you when you support. Basically, you have to choose this. I take it you will help us. Wonderful! I knew you wouldn't let us down. But come, I would introduce you to your friends in the Order. Tell me, does the name Charlianne ring any bells? It used to be one of Eorzea's six city-states, and was situated in the northwest of Aldenard. Can't say it does. The Charlians were the keepers of wisdom both old and new. Their mastery over magic and ether was unsurpassed, and even the Garlians knew to fear them. Among their number, there were a noble few who devoted their lives to safeguarding the future of Eorzea. When the realm began its descent into chaos, and their countrymen fled for the motherland, they alone chose to remain here. 
These noble men and women were called the Archons. Those same brave souls stand before you now. The masked woman is Ida, and beside her is Popolimo. The two are charged with surveying the Twelve's Wood. Hello there! Welcome! Well, come. Okay, my turn to introduce someone. That there is Thancred. I met him. He is our man here in Ulda, Jewel of the Desert. Welcome to the team. I never doubted that you'd come. If I may, the lovely maiden beside me is named Yastola. Limsa Lominsa has the pleasure of being under her care. Greetings. Last but not least is Orianger, who presides over all affairs within these halls. Pray seek him out whenever you have questions. Dawn may banish even the darkest night. The words of a dear friend. I am glad of our meeting. At the Battle of Cartineau, our leader was taken from us. But we did not stray from our purpose. We sought out Minfilia and others with her talent, and together established the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Along with the Archons, those blessed with the Echo play a pivotal role in our endeavor to forge a brighter tomorrow for the realm. Oh! I should also introduce you to Tataru, our clerk. She ensures that everything runs smoothly. Pleased to make your acquaintance! In time, I hope you will come to think of us as family. But, without further ado, I would assign you your first task. Urianger, have the documents arrived from the students of Baldessian? Aye, my lady. They arrived but recently. We have received a request for aid from the Immortal Flames. Thancred, would you do the honors? It would be my pleasure. Some days ago, a crystal caravan registered to Amagina and Son's mineral concern was waylaid and divested of its cargo. But there is more. Within a bell of the robbery, several people were reported missing from the shantytown outside the city. At a glance, one would assume the involvement of bandits, kidnappers, and coincidence. Such crimes are hardly uncommon and the Immortal Flames deal with their like almost every day. However, this time we have reason to believe that a Primal is involved. Aye, the evidence left behind implicates the Amosia, who are known worshippers of Ifrit. Ifrit? Uh -oh. If we then consider the objects that were taken, there is no room left for doubt. The crimes were committed in the name of a primal. That you may better understand the nature of our struggle with the primals, I would have you play the leading role in this investigation. Let's go fight Ifrit. You have my thanks. If there is aught you wish to know, I recommend you speak with Thancred. He is well versed in the affairs of Ulda. Ever at your service, dear fellow. Ready to be in, are we? That's the spirit. And so then your mission is to investigate a crystal robbery at a spate of abduct and a spate of abductions. 
crime which we believe to be connected. Assuming we're correct, it is like that any other any discoveries we make in relation to one will further our understanding of the other. Now, since the attack on the caravan, our friends at the Munchina and Sun's Mineral Concern have doubled security over all of their shipments. In light of this, it is my judgment that the abduction should be our priority. According to our preliminary findings, the majority of the missing were last seen in the vicinity of Camp Drybone, so that we would seem that would seem a fine place to begin. A fellow by the name of Isenberg Barn served as a camp's de facto leader. Pay him a visit and see that he gives us his full cooperation. Camp Drybone. <laughs> That is there, and we can actually pay 160 and jump over there. Considering how far away we are, I think let's just go. 160 is like nothing. One person more money. Come here, Katie. Firecracker. This is the firecracker. He's whining, so if you hear any noises, it's probably him. He just wants attention. He's a very vocal kid. Aren't you, firecracker? Hi, I'm Eisenbard. Here to search for the missing folk, I take it. Minophilia sent word that an adventurer fitting your description would be along. She also warned us that the worry to be wary of the Amalgia. It seems we know who the culprits are at the very least. Now I bear no official title at this camp, but the people here have come to look at to me for leadership. I have my word that I'll do all I can to help see the victim safely return. Okay. souls deserve a proper burial. I would see to the deed before mongrels catch their scent, but I know not if the Amal just still lingers. Would you secure their remains for me, friend? You will find them on the eastern road. Twelve willing, you may even come to learn something <coughs> of what the Amalja seek in this area.
back to camp dry bones. Okay. I could jump, but I might die. Where do I walk? Around here. Oh, I could jump this way. given back proper to the earth, these souls will find their way across to the other side. You have done a noble deed this day, I think. Now then, what are the etymology? Did you see it? Surely such massive monstrosities as they cannot conceal their presence, much less take their quarry unawares. Ah, so there were etymology much. Your part in the low warrant disappearing is all but confirmed. But I sense there is no, there is more to this than the eye. The occasional wall generating party would not account for people going missing in these kinds of numbers. The total is too great and the questions too many. It would not surprise me in the least to learn of another man this. But who? Countless travelers pass through dry wood every day. And even if it were one of them, how would we best discover who may be implicit in these conditions? We need to turn the investigation to the common folk. What say we turn an eye to the common folk then, themselves? It may be among them. Though we find reasons for the vanishings, well, forbid it to be so. And there is a merchant by the name of Ungust, who was born here in Rybone and grew up in the Golden Bazaar. A rough character, but he knows the people here better than anyone else. I'd wager he's at the inn, quaffing away the day's earnings. Here, I'll write a note for you to show him. Else, he's not like to speak to him. Just leave me be. Okay. That's what he says. How about the devious derelict? I have nothing to say but this. Thal take who or whatever's been feeding uh, us no folk. Sounding hungry. Petrified pauper. 
What do you want from me? I don't know anything, I swear. Please don't kill me. Or in scared. chance that after casting cure the MP cost of your next cure 2 will be zero. Uh, okay. Alright, this can't wear it's worse than what I have. If we would know what the common folks speak to their of to their gods, no better place to go fast and at the church of St. Adama Randama. It is a small and humble church found to the northwest of here. So long as you're hidden there, I might ask you to deliver this embalmed corpse. A morbid request I grant you, but it is must be born to burial, and I trust none more than you to see it. Seek out a man named Marquez. He tends the graves of the English here. Marquez, yes. A body? Of course. There there have been so many bodies of late. I, I apologize, sir. If you seek a place of burial, then there is an empty grave atop the ridge. Take the pad and lay him to rest there. Oh. 
this time. in Thal's realm. What? Missing people? I... I'm afraid I cannot help you. But maybe sister or can can. Or can can. <laughs> See, she's been kind to me. Everyone, everyone has been so kind. I don't know why, though. I, pardon me. When you find sister or can we need to trip I hear you've done us a service for, of burying a fallen soul. Please accept our gratitude and extend it to Isambard when you next when next you see him. Mm hmm? You seek knowledge of missing drybone inhabitants. It is true I am closer to the people than any other of the order. I confide in them and they in me. When you wi they wish to speak to their keeper, Thal, I am the medium through which they do. Should I learn anything pertinent, I will be sure to share information with you. Ah, <sighs> my only wish, Marquez, would be more helpful in the matter. I pray you he did nothing to offend. I saw terrible things during the calamity. His scars run deep. Indeed, he seems to now prefer the company of the dead over the living. While tragic, I fear such behavior ill befits the church. I received word not long ago that one of our visitors, a man called Pancred, I believe, took offense in his conduct. I must have words with Marquez and soon. Alright, go back to the camp. Dry bone. A pleasure, my dear Isambard. My name is Thangred and I share a passion with you and our mutual friend here for learning what has become of those missing persons and why. I too spoke with Ungus more times than I care to count. There seems to be some truth to his notion, this notion of common folks speaking their secrets only to those in service of the gods. Prostration, prayer, penance. Abject deeds done behind closed doors, away from prying eyes. Who better than to take to take the pious unawares when than she who takes confession, a good sister offering herself? Orkin, she wouldn't, she couldn't. Even the most beautiful roses have thorns on their fingers, and you would be wise to keep this an eye on this one. Still, the Lich Keeper marks. I swear to the Twelve, I've seen that face elsewhere before. Alright, can't wear that. <laughs> For the children. This Embard is concerned about the questions surrounding her integrity. Sister Orkin, it can't be. Though she is wont to travel to the Golden Bazaar on her own, it is not uncommon to see her speaking to the children. But no, it couldn't be she, could it? Hmm. Uh, I grow weary of these suspicions. I know there's one child in particular she's fond of. Pray seek out the boy, maybe, and see if you cannot glean something from him about Orkin. Ah. 
Uncombed urchin. <clears throat> this must be a trap. <clears throat> Please help, Sister Orkin went out all on her own and hasn't come back. She always reads to me right here about fall and the order in the other side. I told her I lost my shiny thing and she went looking for it. But what if the monsters heard her out outside hurt her? Please find her. you arrived just when you did. It seems my gratitude is yours yet again. You spoke with the child? Yes, well, I was able to find his lost trinket. It is a ring given him by his mother before she passed. I will see it safely back to him. Thank you. 
to happen about every hour. That's probably why it's free. Amal Jarong pieces. Ah. ah, there you are, Mangler. So good of you to come. Indeed, I've heard all about good sister Ocran. Isambard said her wounds were serious. It would seem it, my suspicious, suspicions about the poor Rose were misplaced. But false though they were, perhaps my suspicions were not entirely without merit. Whilst following sister Ocran near the Golden Bazaar, a band of Amalja caught my eye. I tracked them as far as this encampment, but when, well, let us say that I would much prefer to keep my distance and remain here. This, of course, brings to my, brings me to why I requested you, dear Mangler. Would you be so kind as to take a look inside? Fancy. This leaflet, see the wealth of Nald to the hands of your children. It looks to be some sort of assembly to provide the poor with work. The lettering, though atrocious, is not, and these bits about Nald Thal seem somewhat less than studied. I find it hard to believe one among the order penned this. Pray take this to the inn at Camp Drybone. Let us see what Sister Orkin makes of it. Nashes. Okay, stay away from him. Level four. I'm curious. 
if I jump off of here, first of all, would I die and would my stuff take any damage? Right, my body right now is at condition 93. I didn't die. Um, still at 93. as a priest to think. These troubling notions aside, it is great gratifying to finally be able to move this investigation forward. Thank you once again, Mangler. I shall keep my ears and eyes open. Now more than ever. I'm afraid I have not seen any unusual activity, nor have any in this camp given any cause to doubt them. But unless we can identify the culprit, and soon, more innocents will fall victim. Do not despair just yet, my friend. An idea occurs to me. Our suspects when posing as a priest using leaflets bearing false promises to lure the poor. Let Mangler and me serve like with like by posing as impoverished souls in need of succor. Ah, I dare to hope that this will yield us the answers we seek. It will be a dangerous undertaking, but you two are more than capable of looking after yourselves. I'm next to useless in a battle, but I can supply the garments for the disguise. These old tunics and slots should serve your needs, so long as you don't mind the smell and the stains. These will serve very well. You have my things. Listen, Mangos. As to lay the foundation for our little ploy, you must make it widely known that more vagrants have arrived at camp and are desperate for coin. To this end, I want you to don the old garments as Embarga has lent us and beg for work around the camp. Before long, the false priest should catch me and approach us. Weathered Shepherd's Tunic, we'll take that. Weathered Shepherd's Slops, Let's see if that's good. Enough. Yep, now it says talk to everybody. Start with you, Swain Help. I preach the teachings of Azimia, Azima the Warden. Hast thou come to partake? of the honey of her wisdom. Azema is keeper of the sun and goddess of Inkhorn. All is laid bare beneath the light of her divine countenance. Open thy heart to this light, being child, and thou shalt want for God's 
smoke the Indian Kings. One down, four to go. Is it? Gosh, not again. Look, being poor doesn't give you the right to pest for whomsoever you like. Why don't you keep with your own kind out by that muddy pond of yours at Drybone? Alright, one left. And... Is it above me? Is it say above? Sir, is there a, I might assist you with? Oh, I, I don't believe there is. I'm afraid our wares are very expensive. Mayhap you should rejoin your fellows out at the pond north of south of Sandy. Fine evening for catching false priests, wouldn't you say? You look absolutely smashing, Mangler. Positively dressed for deception. All that's left then is to wait for your quarry to appear. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, you poor unfortunate souls. This is no way for men to live. No way at all. Who are you? What do you want? Be at ease, child, for I mean you no harm. I am a priest of the Order Nadthal. I come to offer you succor. This leaflet bears the teachings of Nald. Trust to them, and they will surely see set you free from the shackles of penury. Hmm, a tempting offer, but I'm afraid I must decline. On account of the atrocious performance, you would have made a god's awful mummer, Ungust. What? How'd you know? You tricked me. Please don't hurt me. I was only doing it to protect my people. Is that so? Do continue. Very well. I'm a man of the Golden Bazaar. Raised there, if not born. Some moons ago, the Amalja raids began. They would appear sudden as a stand sandstorm and plunder and pillage at will. Our defenders couldn't stand against them. Few as they were, everyone lived in fear. I wanted to save my people, but being a merchant was all I knew. And so I did the only thing a merchant could. I approached the Amalja in hopes of brokering a deal. In return for sparing the Golden Bazaar, they made demands, outrageous ones. Demands? Of what kind, pray tell? First of all, they wanted the schedule for sh crystal shipments from the Nanawa mines. For this, I bribed one of the workers to leak me in the information. Next, they wanted me to bring them people. So I posed as a priest to lure in the vulnerable and give them over to the Amalja. I, I didn't have a choice. Protecting one's home is a noble thing, but at the cost of innocence, you could have sought the aid of the immortal flames. Yet you did not. I suspect that you're not telling me the full story. What made you sell out your own people? Speak. The <clears throat> was good. What'd you say? The coin was good, I said. I could sell mole me at a score of lifetimes and not even see a fraction of what the Amalja paid. You sacrificed innocence so you could line your own pockets. Words fail to express the contempt I feel for you. Spare me your contempt. If you want to blame someone for the mess the world's in, then blame yourselves or the gods. Oh ha, not you again. Were you the one leaking the Immortal Flames patrol routes to the enemy as well? Spit it out. No, I know nothing about that, I swear it. At this stage, I'm rather disinclined to believe a pot that leaves your mouth, but no matter, there'll be time enough to learn the truth. <laughs> Mangler, be a good man and take word of these developments to Minfilia, will you? I shall prize everything I can out of this filth. The abductees are still somewhere out there. Our foremost priority is to rescue them. That's expensive, 320. Uh, it's kind of far. I'll take too much. Time is more. This guy can take me to Vesper.
If I have a main hit, I could have actually put a shield on all these things. Oh, two handed weapon. spilled before all is said and done. Okay, this will get me a weapon. Life, materia, and everything. Douglas Adams. Life, the university. <laughs> Though we seek a peaceful solution to the primal problem, we must need we must needs be ready to fight for our cause. That you might take to the field suitably prepared, I would have you meet with a goblin acquaintance of mine. His name is Ludamix Bubbly Cots. He's a scholar of no small repute. Ludamix is renowned for having introduced a revolutionary method of enhancing equipment to Eorzy. The knowledge of this method was once a closely guarded secret, but thanks to Mutamix and his students, it has now been disseminated, disseminated to the great benefit of all the room. It would serve you well to acquire an understanding of the process. For this purpose, I shall lend you the Take it to Mutamix and bid him use it to demonstrate his craft to you. Mutamix is ever to be found at his camp in Central Fondola. Place unknown, a place known as the bonfire. Look for a pillar of smoke, and the way will be found.
am I running into a wall here? Probably still wearing that user clothes. There we go. All right, two different things here. We got Splin Bros and Bubble Bots. Let's start with Splin Bros. Forging the spirit. Splin Bros wishes to disseminate the secrets of materia creation. Yeah. What would you say if I told you that inanimate objects can possess a soul? Are you would, believe it or not, although the soul in question is not their own, but that of their own. Through faithful service, the arms and armor that we use come to hold our spiritual energy. Thus, we do form a spirit bond. This spiritual energy can be drawn out and converted to into material. A special kind of crystal that can be attached to gear to enhance its properties. I am well versed in the ways of material extract. Do you wish to learn more about the process? You are ready to convince your learning? Good. As you all have gathered by now, material is a crystallized form of the spiritual energy. As this energy is derived from the individual psyche, a volatile beast at the best of times, a degree of variance is to be expected in its, in its production. In practice, this means that you won't know the exact properties of a stone until you create it in your hand. Now, material won't grant you much of anything on its own. Its power must be taxed, and this is achieved by melding it to, to, to gear. Know though that it takes the deft hands of the craftsman to mold the material. You can always seek others to attach material on your behalf, but you will sooner do it yourself. I recommend you speak to Fullbox. The melding is her favorite to please. If you wish to remove it from an item, highlight it, select it, retreat. There's a chance of being salvaged. from one piece of gear can be affixed to another, including its attributes. To extract material from an item, you must have created a spirit bond with it by using this and repeatedly in about once it's to 100% extraction. Once material is extracted from an item, the spirit bond will goes back to 1%. Done by a circle of the hand or with a human Remove it, you need skills. Otherwise, you can't play. Who is Uplander? Come to the 10th ring of Muda Mix Mobile Pots. Fighting tool drinks and carry self. Itself, fighting tool changes to Shoni Shine, made of material. There's the whole boss. Material had joined with other fighting tool. Fighting tool gains power of very self. Shh, Shikap. Who would mix his reckoning that Uplander is framed from killing Yes, tongue flaps reach. Ears of Muda Mix with Fastness. Mumbinophilia wants Uplander to see power of Materia. Uplander brings fighting to it to Muda Mix, yes? Shikara. 
fighty tool is unstrong as he can be. Make a good TG show if power of winter. Eyes of a planer point at fighting tool, yes? Shh, stop. Material joining the fighting tool. Fighting tool against power of material. Fighting tool reborn. Here, a planer will take fighting tool to the material. Material, strictly speaking, is a kind of crystal. It is created by drawing out the heat. In theory, Instruments from the piece of equipment and then crystallizing it. Not just by old equipment will serve my youth, it must be sufficient spirit line. That we need a measure of how fully an item has been imbued by its own spirit. When we attach a piece of material to gear, we imbue the bonus item with its power. That's how Master Moon makes turn the dagger of Mars from summit that works would struggle to cut stake when we get up in the Uplander wishes to be joiner of the period, and Uplander best for brain case with millions of crafting. With millions of crafting, Uplander can become joiner of the If Uplander wants brain case to rattle with millions of material, Uplander best trade twin flaps with learning ones of millions. Talk to this one and say give me a discount too.
das war alles für dich. Probably triple triad stuff off for me because it's not going so well. It's not the most exciting one. Such as yourself, I dare say there is no finer, no place finer than Halitali to test your skill and refine your technique. Indeed, I have taken the liberty of passing your name on to the flames who own the the place. Should you visit, speak one, speak to Fafa Joni. Alright, I'll go there, I will go there. Seeds of change, who's that?
Ah, what a remarkable difference a single piece of material can make. Granted, the skills needed to manipulate the substance are not easily acquired, but one need only look upon the results to realize such efforts are worthwhile. As I'm sure you're aware, the quality of one's equipment can be the difference between victory and defeat. Materia may well give you the edge you need, maybe, so make it your own. Now, it is time we discuss the matter of your next mission. Pray speak with me when you're ready to do it. like I might be able to use it. Elm Crook, yep, and it's an increase. It's upgrade. Ooh, it's blue. I'm looking at the uh, spirit wand. Let's see. Oh, this one's 100, so I'm going to right click on this one. as the level of the item increases. If you lack the ability to meld the material to an item, you may enlist the aid of other players or speak with a materia melder NPC. Another option is to find a similar piece of armor with material already attached. The markets are perfectly are a perfect place to find specially crafted items synthesized by disciples of the hand from across the York Sea, which I'm not allowed to access apparently. Another option is to find another PC to meld the material for you. One way to do this is via the player search feature. Once you have found a PC capable of doing the meld, in terms have been agreed upon, target the player and search request meld in the subcommands. Sounds complicated. concerning your our ongoing investigation. It appears he was able to extract some information from our friend Ungas, the false priest. He revealed that he is due to meet with the Amalji Ja to discuss their demons. The immortal flames only that the meaning will present an ideal opportunity to ambush and capture the Amalji responsible for the abductions, so they mean to have Ungas attend as planned. As the Amalja are anticipated to offer fierce resistance, many mortal flames have requested our support. I would have you provide it to them, Mangler. Ungrade is presently attending another, to another guy, but will join you as soon as he's able. And until such time as he does, you will be, you will be the sign of soul representative on the ground. Before he left, he bade, you tell, he bade me tell you to save some for him, such is his confidence in you, a confidence I share. When you've been made ready, pray take yourself to Camp Drybone, report to the Flame Sergeant, leading the mission. Man, I just got rid of this cheap transport there. Actually, I'll go back to Olda and then I'll... Um, main light. Yeah, I'll do that because I need to occupy the quest and then I can get the bell spark faster. I think that's how it works. Yes, bell spark, the paint company. Yes,
made it to the first visit. Update register with your name so I can access this in the future. Camp Drive Yeah. 
station is here to keep an eye on the Amalja and the region. Should you see any, do not draw too near, it's a simple grave with a mature. to the rendezvous point to meet the traitor, we'll spring the trap. Owing to the clandestine nature of the mission, we can deploy only a small contingent. Every mu member must count, so we request the aid of the scientists. The rendezvous will take place at the invisible city. Make your way there, lie in wait. We stand to learn much much and more of the Amalja plot in the mission if the mission succeeds, Bangler. Let's make sure it does.
across the way and put up your weapon, your comrades and enemy. Behind you! Bring him. The rest of you, march. Traitor scum. We tried. What comes next? Still alive? Captured peoples. I fear the Amalja mean to give us their god as an offering. If I must die, then let me die a soldier's death to steal and hate. Bowl of embers now accessible. What is that? What's a bowl of embers? Is that a place? I think it's a dungeon. It's a dungeon, look at that. Open up a dungeon. Let's see if we can get out of this place. Lord of Inferno, hearken to our queen. Lord of Inferno, in the most of my misery. Alright. Oh my dear friend. Lord of the Inferno, your humble servants beseech you. Races with your divine presence. That's the only explanation. Forsooth, thy frail mortal flame frame can serve as vessel to the blessing of but one, yet I smell not the taint of another upon me. The truth of thine allegiance waxeth clear. Thou art of the godless blessed's number. The paragon is warned of thine abhorrent kind. Thine existence is not to be so. There's the flame circle.
to do my limit. <laughs> Yay! We did it, we bet for it. Woohoo! So awesome. Oh we got a tiny piece of red. Red must be Ifrit's color. So now we gotta go fight the blue blue guy. Who's blue Shiva? Four more to go. Pray forgive my lateness. I'm great. I was delayed by a congregation of Amalza zealots. I swear she seemed more evangelical than us. Unexpected show of strength. Could such a foe prove a hindrance to our plans? Perhaps, but that is a consideration for another time. You've been given a task, and that is your priority. I suggest you treat it as such. Fail to do as my lord commands, and I will spare him the trouble of punishment.
are, Baylor. Come, rest a while. You will have no better opportunity. After witnessing their gods' ignominious defeat, they will all jail unless you find to risk our wrath for a time at least. Now, where were we? I am in the process of apologizing. I do hope that I you can forgive me. I arrived too late to be of any use to you or They may be whole of body, but the same cannot be said in the lives. You once, for once, in this temple. Ah, but it ill suits me to dwell on my life. And in all our misfortunes, there are still reasons to rejoice. You greatest me by your hand. Ordinary. On the contrary, I have long suspected that you have the potential to shape the fate of this realm. What can I say? My fine eye for talent remains unknown. And Philia will be proud beyond all reckoning when she hears of your deeds. I trust you shan't object to my very tightest terror. That way I can claim to have contributed something to this wish. You, meanwhile, Self arrest. Take some time to relax and walk into the uh, walking, return to the walking sands when you're pretty ready. We can discuss matters in, in more detail now. Just don't take too long, will you? The realm's problems won't solve themselves. Alright, back to the walking sand. Take a chocobo to walk in silence. triumphant hero returns. Fancred told us the news upon his arrival. He's presently in the solar, giving a full report to Lady Minfilia. You should join them at once. Lady Minfilia is most eager to see you. cost Mangler his life. I wasn't there when the Amalj took him prison, and it wasn't there when they served him to Ifrit. <clears throat> yes, by some miracle he survived, but that does not excuse the fact that he should never have had to face such fears on dangers alone. I failed him utterly, just as I am failing you now, you all. What's done is done, Thangfrey. You can ill blame yourself for every Mangler, it is so good to see you again. Impeccable timing, my friend. I just finished regaling Minfilia with your heroic exploits. 
Langford has told me everything. You've done well to return to us. The perils you faced were undeniably great, yet a part of me believes that I had no cause to fear. And now you can be put aid to our long investigation. As we suspected, the Imalja undertook both the robbery and the abductions with the aim of summoning their primal Ifrit. Nor is this tale limited to Olda. Similar incidents have been rife in both Lim Limzolomensa and Gardania of late. I dare say you've been curious as to how these crimes are linked to the primals. Permit me to explain. Having manifested in the physical realm, primals must consume ether if they are to maintain their presence here. And the stronger they become, the more ether they require. Now, ether exists throughout creation. It flows through all life and permeates the air that we breathe. Alas, this alone will not suffice to sustain the likes of ether. Nay, he and his kind require a more concerning source of ether, crystal. It is for this reason that incidents involving crystals can often be traced back to a primal. Which leaves us with the why of the abductions. To understand this, you must first understand how primals are born. When all is well with the world, primals possess no physical form. Their essence is dispersed across the great river of ether. However, when the world is plunged into chaos, those who worship the primals cry out to their gods for deliverance from suffering. These cries serve as a beacon toward which a primal's essence is irresistibly drawn. It is this coming together, or etheric coalescence, which grants the being's physical form. Once born, a primal gains strength from its followers' worship. The more numerous and fervent they are, the more powerful their god becomes. But the primals are seldom satisfied with such reverence as their adherents freely give. In order to gain more power, they do not scruple to create followers. They do this by tempering morals, the process to which you yourself were subjected. Yet even as Ifrit took your comrades in this thrall, in his thrall, you alone remained unaffected. This is thanks to the power you possess, the Echo. We know not the why of it, but those blessed with the Echo are immune to primal influence. It is as though a greater power protects us. When you first came to us, I told you that the Echo would be instrumental in dealing with the primal threat. I trust you now begin to see why. <clears throat> The recent incidents all share a common trait, meticulous planning. Such elaborate designs are a new development, and one which fills me in with an unshakable sense of foreboding. While I share your concern, my presiding feeling is one of relief to your safe return. Ah, the immortal flames assured me that they will deal with the aftermath, so you need not concern yourself with that. We may rest easy for a time. I suggest you take full advantage of this respite, Nadler. You may be sure it won't last long. Once the people learn the identity of the hero who felt afraid, I feel, I fear you will have nearly a moment to yourself. Whether she intended to or not, Amphilia neglected to tell you something. Something I think would be best you heard from one of us. It concerns the temp tempered abductees that were rescued. I am sorry to report that all are to be put to death, the flames with whom you are imprisoned included. Needless to say, this information must not be made known to the public. I swear to you that you, we would not do this if it weren't for if there were any other recourse. But once a man is tempered, he's tempered for life. His very existence lends strength to the primal whom he cannot choose but worship. And so we scions continue our fight. That no more innocents need be sacrificed. I hope you will continue to stand with us, Mingler. 
But I should be going. I must offer my apologies to the Flame General for the losses his people suffered. Till next time. Gods forgive me. How many more lives? Louis the Ninth would never have allowed this to happen. I have to do better. I have to be stronger. Level 33. Alright, let's see if anything that we got is better than what we have. Yes, we can upgrade our bracelets. Ninety percent to a spirit bond. I'm still gonna switch. Wearing a wry smile, but it has something to do with your newfound fame. Hero in the making. Until not very long ago, you were but one of the many adventurers seeking to make their way to music in your zeal. But for your character and courage, you were raised to the esteemed post of honor. Thereafter, you traveled the realm, aiding those in need without thought of reward, confirming to Thancred that the Scions would benefit from, our, from your aid. And no sooner had you joined us, and you personally invested in the primal Ifrit. You've achieved a great deal in a short time, and won fame in so doing. Alas, fame does not come without a price, this you will soon discover. We have guests, mainly, or rather, you have guests. You have guests. Spirit to test. Big pardons. Ah, Lady Minfilia, radiant as always. I am given to understand that the scions of the Seventh Dawn have but recently welcomed a new hero into our, their midst. I am here on behalf of the Maelstorm, Maelstrom, Grand Company of Limsa Laminsa, to offer said hero a place of honor within our ranks. As you can see, Mangler, your recent exploits have garnered you the attention of the grain companies of the Yarzia. Each organization would have it for its bane or its own. To this end, all three have sent officers to court you. They would no, not ordinarily go to such lengths to enlist a new recruit. That they have, what have is evidence of, your, of their high regard for you. I find myself wondering how word of Mangler's deeds spread so quickly that the immortal flames should know of this triumph is to be expected. But what of the other grand companies? He Your reputation precedes you, Master, Master Might. Tis no ordinary man who can face a primal and emerge the, the victor. The Order of the Twin Adder has need of valiant men such as you. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us ensure that peace ever reigns over the tallest world. What a pleasure it is to finally meet you, Master Mike. My comrades speak of you in the most glowing terms. Why, even before you aided us against the Amalja and their dead pri dread primal, Yours was already a respected name in Ulda. Our people know you and love you well. A man of your talent belongs with the immortal flames. Join your strength to ours, friend, and together let us secure a prosperous future for Ulda. The Admiral was not exaggerating when she said you have the look of a hero. Mm -hmm. Full often does she speak of you, friend. It is only natural that we should want you for the maelstrom. 
Join your strength to ours, and together let us see the grand vessel of Limsel and Minsa to the shores of glory. Lady Minfilia. Uh, very well. Though I am quite sure you need no reminding, mayhap a brief summary of the situation would help to clarify your thoughts on the matter. As you know, the Grand Companies are all-encompassing organizations empowered to call upon the material, economic, and technological resources of their respective city-states in times of strike. There are presently three such organizations in Eurasia, the Maelstrom of Limsa Lamensa, the Order of the Twin Adder of Britannia, and the Immortal Flames of Molda. Serving a Grand Company means serving the nation to which it belongs. You will be charged with its defense and task of advancing its cause. In return for your faithful service, you will be furnished with various rewards, some of which may well prove useful to you in your other endeavor. If you are agonizing over which of the grand companies best deserves your loyalty, be at ease. The commitment you make this day need not be permanent. Should you wish to shift your allegiance at a later date, you are entitled to do so, and yet I can see there's no small choice to face. Ah, I thought a thought occurs to me. You will, of course, recall that the three city-states are planning to hold remembrance services. Well, as part of the proceedings, I am given to understand that the leader of each grand company will address deliver an address. Hearing these addresses ought to help you make an informed decision. What say you, my dear officers? A fine suggestion. You are as wise as you are beautiful, my lady. Very well. Let Mangler hear our leader speak. Return here with his decision. We eagerly await your answer. Adventurers are by their nature a liberty-loving breed. They are not best suited to the discipline of military service, but I strongly urge you to join a grand company nonetheless. While the promise of reward is enticing in itself, it is not the only benefit. You are possessed of great power, Mangler, and with it you are capable of doing untold things. Yet know that power is wont to attract attention, not all of it friendly. There will be those who wish you ill, and you must needs to be on the lookout for them. Yet however vigilant you are, you are what, but one man in the midst of a grand company. However, you will be one man amongst many, a friend amongst friends. Your achievements will be shared, and so will the danger. I can think of no better arrangement. Of course, joining one organization need not mean leaving another. I hope that you will continue to rely on our aid, your aid. The Twelve know that you will, we will have need of it in the days ahead. The Grand Companies seek to protect their own nations. We Scions, on the other hand, seek to preserve the future of Eorzea as a whole. Similar, yet not quite the same. Now then, I expect you will be held more often in the future. As such, I would have you carry this Link Pearl with you at all times. It will allow us to stay in touch regardless of location. Eorzea is changing, Mangler, and you have the power to help shape it anew. None can say what the morrow will bring, but so long as we believe in ourselves, there is not we cannot achieve. Now it's time for you to make ready for your journey. Before you depart, be sure to speak to Tatuma. She will apprise you as to where and when the remembrance services are due to take place.
I, um, I'm sorry about any attention you're getting, Mangler. I might have sung your praises a little too loudly and often to a few too many people. And next time, I'll be sure to hold my tongue, literally, and if necessary. Anyway, I expect you to know where and when the marriage choice is taking place. If all goes well, through Daniel's Grand Company, the Lord of the Twin Hour, hold the first of the three services. The elder seats here at Ben's and Sam will deliver her address at Marie Kedos and Probably mentioned you at this point in the organization of changes involving some of the Lord parties, it's possible the order of the might change. Still, there's no one to make any the first port. When you go to Olda, they tell you where to go, how to send a special guest, so that's me. Yep. In fact, we're looking at it. Alright, well, we can get there quickly to the past there. Now, I know there's something here on the children. First, and then we'll work back on the I think Bent, Bent Bridge was at the end of the place where it was doing Welcome, Ashley Houston. How you doing? How's it going? I just I beat Ephraim a few to minutes the calamity. ago. You just missed it. The three seats are all chat, together. Yes. Some say you couldn't take a step without stumbling over a body. Forebears were once strangers in the Twelves Wood. Fearful of the Green Wrath, they hid themselves in the dark recesses of the earth. Yet they dreamed of basking in the dappled sunlight of the forest. Through great effort, they proved their worth to the elementals and were granted a place beneath the boughs. So it was that Gradania was born, some five centuries ago. Working hand in hand, the Hur and the Elizan settlers sowed the seeds of our civilization, and soon they were joined by folk of all races. So nourished by the waters of unity, and blessed by the light of the matron, Gridania flourished into the great nation it is today. I'm doing very well. Do you see I'm the Gridanian stand? There, hanging behind the Elder Seatseer. 
The entwined serpents represent the unity between Hur and Elizin. An elegant symbol, do you not agree? In accordance with the will of the Elementals, we have embraced a life of peace. Alas, our neighbors hey, have not always channel. sought the same for themselves. The yeah, nor it's a little bit us. slow today. Um, you can definitely use Discord. That's fine. Though we Gridonians have no love for war, in a few minutes, we I have mean, still less for those who would threaten so. our way of life. Ever have we fought to protect the sanctity the of the Twelveswood. When the Garlean Empire brought its War of Conquest to Eorzea, we rallied under the noble standard of the Twin Adder that we might push back the encroaching darkness. And it was we who prepared the ground for the reformation of the Eorzean Alliance that all the peoples of this realm might stand united against the common threat. Send your request on Discord to be accepted. Yeah, I'll open it. Five years ago, the Alliance met the armies of the Empire upon the fields of Cartano. It would prove the bloodiest battle in recent memory. Countless Gridanian lives were lost. As Supreme Commander of the Order of the Twin Adder, ever shall I bear the weight of our people's sacrifice. Alas, their loss was not the only tragedy to befall us that day, for soon came the Calamity. The scars borne by our forest are a constant reminder of its violence. Our lives have been irrevocably changed, each waking hour a struggle to survive. Driven to desperation, some among us have strayed from the path of righteousness, resorting to banditry, poaching, and other unconscionable deeds. To compound our woes, the Ixil have returned in force, emboldened by our suffering. They test our defenses nigh without cease, and prey upon the vulnerable. So beleaguered from within and without, it is of little wonder that our unity now falters. Dark times are upon us. Time was a man could a walk on the high bloody road without fear. On this day, five years ago, countless Eorzeans laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. Please join with me in honoring their memory. And how do you propose to honor the memory of those you cannot remember, pray tell? The destruction wrought by the Calamity was indiscriminate. It dealt death to Eorzean and Garlean alike. Yet while we have labored to rebuild our homes, to rebuild our lives, the Empire has set about raising steel fortresses here in the Twelveswood. Let none be mistaken. The Garleans remain the greatest threat to our survival. If we are to stand against them, we must remember what it is to be united. Our many troubles blind us to the woes of our fellow man. Thence is harmony lost. Yet harmony is the founding principle of Gridania. We are gathered here to honor the fallen. Let them be honored not only in word and thought, but through concerted action. I bid you join hands with me once more beneath the Twin Adder Standard. And together, let us heal the forest's wounds, that our progeny might live in harmony beneath these ancient boughs. For serenity, purity, and sanctity.
We must think of the children! Woods will be done! It's up to us to protect the forest! All the elementals! If you'll permit me, Alfie No. And my sister, Alize, at your service. I saw at a glance that you were a fellow traveler. You might call us students of history, sampling the realm's remembrances in pursuit of enlightenment. Guardians are unfortunate enough to have to contend with two beast tribes. The Exil are unquestionably the more troublesome, being of a naturally warlike disposition, and want to summon their bloodthirsty primal Garuda. Whoops. The Guardians have no love of war, and they consider open conflict a last resort. Though they clash with the Exil ever more regularly, we may be assured that they do so in self-defense. As for the Sylphs, they are as yet bound by a peace treaty, though one wonders how long it will be before it is broken. The Twelve's Wood was previously wounded during the calamity, leaving, leaving Gridania vulnerable to attack. People are hopeful that restoring the wood, and thereby the power of the elementals, will put an end to their wars. Yet how long will this take? Centuries, I wager. Meanwhile, the Ixal will continue their incursions, spurred on by Garuda and their insatiable appetite for destruction. Whether the Gradanians like it or not, sooner or later it will come to all out war. And when it does, the Order of the Twin Adder will need all the help it can muster. How, how valuable might the aid of the capable adventure prove to them then? See you guys.